All right, we're back. We are COMP 308 in the winter 2019 semester at Centennial, and we are week nine, part two of our broadcast. We just finished mean CRUD. Now we're finishing mean authentication, um, which is just, again, continuing with what we did last week. We've been also looking at GitHub this week for project. Um, reason that GitHub for GitHub projects. It's not a bad little tool, I mean, for it being free and all. And I think it ties in nicely with uh, Git, you know, commits and so on. I think these are good things. So what we have left on the project to do, we're sitting with the, um, using the mean stack demo project we've created. I've got a couple things on the backlog. I've got as a user, I like to be able to register so that I can access secure areas of the website. These are all to do's now. So I imagine, you can imagine that this would have been, uh, like for example, another sprint or another series of work that I would have done. You know, as an example, I'm communicating uh, everything. The backlog is going to be free after this, which means technically I would have finished off my product, right? Or this particular release, so whatever you want to call it, right? So I want to start off again with um, what makes sense. So I'm going to do authentication. Now, this is a big section, guys. We have two hours left. I don't think we're going to get it done. Yeah, if you think that, you know, um, the last section was long and I was going fast, this section is really long and very complex um, and full of errors. That's, I mean, I've tried to make it as small as I can. I've tried to minimize that, but I'm just letting you know. So I'm gonna pull over registration. That's the first part I wanna do. I want to do registration and login first. And then once I've done registration and login, I wanna do logout. So those three things. After that, protecting the pages becomes the most difficult part. How do I protect? How do I create an auth guard, if you will, a, a guard service that stops uh, users from going to different parts of my website, right? And both on the front end and on the back end, right? I can be able to do that. Finally, if we have time, and I don't think we will, um, I probably will add in um, some additional things for the validation service we talked about. We'll do that next, right? Okay, so let's check this out and see if we can get this done. So we're going to start off with registration pages. So again, continuing from what we did in the first recording, uh, we're going to go into some of the things we've done. So we've gone into services. Um, we've created a contact service, but we need to create an auth service. And we've got the uh, kind of like a framework for that right now. But the first thing we need um, is in our model, I want to add a user model. Again, what uh, TypeScript allows us to do is we can use a class for a user model. Or what I can also do um, is I can use an interface. And does anyone know the difference between an interface in terms of JavaScript and a class? Anyone have an idea what that does for us? You probably don't. So yes, oh, go put it, say it. If I have a class, it's a contract. If I have an interface, it's a contract that the class needs to use certain pr properties and methods that are listed in the interface because we want to adhere to the interface other, other languages like Swift, as an example, call it a protocol, whatever you want. Um, we have to adhere to the protocol um, when we implement it. Yes, it's true. But um, in this case, it's not that. It's that a class structure, a class, I'm using it like a struct, right? Like in C Sharp or in C++. And I'm not really, I don't have any anything else. It's just data members. That's all it is. So sometimes an interface in JavaScript is lighter in, in TypeScript, I should say, um, because there's nothing that's generated from it. It literally is air. It's just used for typing, like to, to check typing. That's all it is. It's literally air in TypeScript. It doesn't do anything at all, right? Whereas a class actually produces code. An interface does not. And a good example of that, I just want to go on from there. If you take a look at typescriptlang.org, uh, for what an interface or a class does. And if I go to Playground for a second, um, you can see I have a greeter class here. Here's the, the result of my greeter class. So um, let's make it even simpler, because I think this is crazy. Let's just talk about a class that's a person class. We've done this before, right? The person class itself has a constructor. We can see the conversion on the right. Uh, the constructor, you know, you're going to have, remember how we did this public? I can say public uh, age you know, kind of thing, and public name, you can see what it does, how it fills in the details on the right. That's a, that's what happens when you put public, anything inside the constructor, it does this. It saves you all kinds of time. 
right? Because otherwise you'd have to do this. It doesn't, you don't have to do that anymore, right? This is a quick and dirty way of doing that that TypeScript provides, right? So this is nice, but provides code, right? Even if I was to do something as simple as, well, a person has age, you know, an age, which is a string, and it also he also must have some kind of, I don't know, job to do, which is also a string, right? I mean, you can see that when I do this, um, it doesn't produce anything over there until up and until I use it. For example, if I had a constructor and then I use the age and name for something, I'll say this.age is equal to some kind of value like 40 and this.job, you know, kind of uh, as an example. Um, and notice it give me an error. <laughs> it shouldn't be a string. It should be a number. But um, and if this.job is like, you know, a uh, carpenter, Okay, Carpenter, if I can spell Carpenter today with my uh, addled brain. You can see that uh, this is what it does, right? It produces stuff only when you use it. Well, this idea of only when you use it translate nicely into interface. So if I was to change this person into interface, interface person, right? Then if I have an age, which is a number, and uh, which I'm going to call it a job, which is a string, um, gee, look what it produces error zero right however i could implement it like for example i could say that i could make a people array right i could say like you know uh let my array uh equal to an array of a person right i could do that no problem right but the problem with this is um actually it's not this way it's um meant person array right I could do that. It's a person array. I could do that. And this on the front end would check to see if it adheres to the person array. Wait, does, is it a person that I have? Like if I hover over this, it tells me it's a person array, right? And if I tried to add a, an array, a person to the array, right, kind of stuff, the person array would be would include a person. I could say that, you know, my array, ah, you know, dot uh, push. And if I, if I gave it something else, Notice it tells me I need items of type person, right? That's the type checking it's doing. But on the right, look what I got. I got nothing. I got none of this, right? So that's why interfaces could be a little bit lighter uh, from a from this instead of a class. We're going to use a class here uh, because there's other things we can include in the person in the user class later on. But you don't need to. So I'm saying. All right. So the user class, uh, what does it have? In the past, we used username, which is a string. We have a password which is also a string, email, which is a string, all these strings, and a display name, which is also a string, right? These are all the things that uh, this object has, right? Um, and what we can do in the future is we can type check against it and say that, does it have a user, you know, these things are gonna be added in as objects, right? Okay, cool. So we've got this. And what I want to do is um, further down, after I've got the model, this is my user model, I can use it in my auth service. So in my auth authentication service, what I want to do is I want to start building up the service just like I did before. Now there's some dependencies I've got to talk about. When I use a service, I've got to include it in the uh, app module, right, at a high level, right? So it's got to be kind of, uh, you know, in the beginning. Also, I know that I'm going to use the uh, my auth service to consume the API that's coming from my server. My server, in our case, our Express API server is both a data server as well as an authentication server. Next week, when we talk about microservices, that can be broken up. You can have one server that all it does is take care of authentication, right? That's all it does. And the other server, all it does is take care of my contact list. And a third thing, all it takes care of is something else. And it might have, it's like a microservice is almost like a mini app, an app component, like really, really small, right? So, um, but for now, it does everything for us, which means we have to consume the uh, HTTP client, HTTP headers, the observable, uh, like we did with the other service, our contactless service. So this stuff that we have up here, HTTP, the, this, these two lines here, as well as all of this, might as well add it in. So we'll just take all this, and we'll go back into our auth service. 
right, and paste it in. Now I don't need uh, my contact. I'm just I've pasted it because just quick. I do need a user, right? Because the user is going to be something that I that I have in there. And I'm missing one more thing that this is that's special that I've got to provision for in my app uh, itself. And this is where it becomes more complex, guys. And I do apologize, but we need to use something called the JWT helper service. Okay, that's what it is. The JWT. Remember, we're using JSON uh, web tokens for authentication, and we're going to get this from Autho or Auth0 Angular.jwt, which we uh, JWT, which we installed uh, a couple weeks ago. All right, so that's the the helper service we're going to use. Um, we're going to use this user. We know that this service is injectable, right? Um, and I need a couple things inside the class. One is a user object which is going to be of type user. Uh, notice as soon as I use it, this turns bluer. It, it becomes ungrayed out, which is what we need. I also want to use a private uh, auth token, an authentication token, which I'm going to store. I don't know the type. I'm going to put any for now. So maybe I take away some of these colons to make it work. How about that? There we go. Um, so that's important. Next, I want to define an endpoint. Right, so I'm going to say private uh, the endpoint, just like we did with in the other service. It's going to be HTTPS colon uh, forward slash forward slash. Sorry, let's say uh, sorry HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost. I'm ahead of myself. Three thousand slash API slash right, which is the API that we're going to use again. I want to use an endpoint like this as opposed to type this every single time. I can change it one place; it changes everywhere. Um, you can take it one step further and put this in another file that's injected. So I have some kind of configuration file that I have at another level that I include here and everywhere else. And then I just change the endpoint once and it's changed in all the files. It's okay to do it this way for now. We have we don't have that many uh, services that depend on the same endpoints. Okay. The other thing that I want to add in is this HTTP options, which I'm going to blatantly steal from my contact list. I don't want to type this again. Um, again, this took a little bit of experimentation to get right, but it seems to work. So I'm going to just copy paste. Again, this what it does is it formats the headers of my API so they come at me in the right format, uh, adjacent format, and that allows cross uh, origin scripting, right? So that's pretty cool. Then, from a dependency injection perspective, what I want to do is I want to include uh, my HTTP client, so private. HTTP is of type HTTP client. I also want to include private. Wow, I'm doing it today for some reason. I got this like colon fetish, right? Private um, JWT service, uh, which is of type uh, JWT helper service, I think is the way it goes. So those are the two that I want to add in the constructor. Um, and then one thing that I don't have in a, in a service is ng on init. I don't have that lifecycle. It's not a component. It's a service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this dot user in here is equal to a new user. I'm going to initialize the user object. And I can do that because I'm not going to render anything. Right? So in this case, service services don't render anything. They get called way before that happens. So I can use the constructor as it's meant to be used. Okay, so that's the first part of my service. So my first service is I want to get things started. I want to get things initialized. Notice also that services do not have a code file that's a, like an HTTP code file. It's just a class that gives me the ability to connect uh, with stuff on the back end. A couple of things we need to do, and I want to mention this again. We're going to read pieces of data, store them in local storage, then compare them with the stuff on the back end. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take the user information, the stuff that I want to store in the payload for JWT, and compare it with my uh, token that I'm going to get from the, ser from the server. When those two things match, I'm authenticated. That's what's going to happen. All right. So in order for me to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a couple things. One is I want to be able to store my user data when I log in. OK, but for now, what I really want to do is I want to take care of this registration piece, which is what I'm working on. So I'm going to say that public, I'm going to make, make a new uh, method called register user. I'm going to probably make all the methods just to make sure we make sure it work out of this, this whole thing. It's of type user. I'm going to take the user that I want to register, right? And it's going to return 
the type is observable, of course. The observable is of type any. We could specify and make it so it's a type of user, but we're going to have problems with that if we do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say that this this dot http dot post any, and we're going to pass in this dot endpoint. We've done this before, plus the register keyword, and then we're going to pass along the user and this dot http options. It's all the same stuff that we did last time. Let's open this up so you can see it better. There it is, register user done. So the way this works is again, I get a user that I want to register, a whole user object. I look at the endpoint that I want to connect to. What am I connecting to? What's the user object? Well, it's this the user object, the user object that I've passed into the register user method. And then I want to format this, uh, the response I get properly. That's all this last part is, or the way I want, not properly. So that's the first part. Next part, um, what I want to do is um, once I've registered a user, I want to be able to authenticate. So again, I'm going to do that next. So public authenticate user. So I want to be able to authenticate. Again, what's the what's the difference between authentication and authorization? Anybody? Come on. You're going to get asked this in, a, in an interview one day, and you're going to say that uh, I never told you, and that's not true. Um, authentication, who am I? Authorization, what can I do? Right? So what am I allowed to do? So HTTP.post. And then I want to do any. Again, I'm passing in the this endpoint. Um, in this case, I'm going to log in. So this the end, the login endpoint, right? Again, I'm passing in this user and this dot HTTP options for formatting purposes. It's identical to registration um, in terms of the format, but I'm doing two very different things here. I'm using two different endpoints. One is processing registration. The other one is processing user login. Okay, it's a pretty straightforward stuff. When I log in, though, I also want to be able to um, store my information. And I'm going to use a, a JSON web token to do that. So what I want to do is I want to have another function that I want to access called store user data. So here's my store user data function. I want to pass in a token, which is of type any. I don't know what token that's going to be. And a user, which is of type user. I want to get those two pieces of information. It's going to return void. Okay, It's not going to be an observable in this case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my local storage, I want to set item to the uh, a string called ID token. Now, think about this whenever we use local storage as a dictionary. All right, so I have a key value pair. So here's my key, ID token. And my value is going to start with something called bearer plus the token, whatever that token happens to be. So I'm adding bearer in front of my token. Once I add bearer in front of my token, and it's got to have a space in here, right? Uh, then what happens is um, the JWT uh, bearer service looks at the authorization bearer and looks and sees if I have a bearer in front of my token, whatever that is. If I do, yay. If I don't, denied. Seriously. <laughs> that took a week. There's no there's documentation is low. On that stuff, that's like literally going. Okay, I want to test this. I don't know what I'm getting. I'm testing this. I don't know what I'm getting. Wait, let's try bearer. Oh, it worked. Okay. Like the documentation is sparse in some of the stuff, or it's difficult to know what to search for. It's a. It's you have to have strong Google foo, like I like to say. All right. Local storage. We're going to use local storage setting item again. And the other thing I want to store in local storage is the user information, which we're going to consume later. And I'm going to stringify that. So JSON stringify, which means I want to make it into a user object that's going to be held in local storage, right? So we're going to kind of take that a user, stringify it, make it into a big string, and store it in local storage. Local storage is temporary storage that's stored on your uh, in your browser, right? So it's not secure. It's clear text, actually. And we're also going to say that my auth token that we have uh, in the in this particular service is going to be equal to the token that we're going to get in through the store user data uh, method. And we're also going to say that this dot user is equal to the user that we're going to get back uh, from the store user data. So that's all this does, stores the user data uh, inside the, the local storage and stores user data inside of our class. That's what it does, OK? At least temporarily. Next, um, we want to process the 
through logout. Logout is actually pretty simple to process. So we're going to say process logout, right? We're going to be, this one is going to be an observable, but it's going to return of type of any. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to say that this dot auth token is equal to null. So whatever the auth, the authorization token we get, we're going to just clear it out. That's what we're going to do. We're also going to say that this dot uh, user is also equal to null. Null is like literally like saying undefined. We just want to undefine it, completely wipe it out. We lose our reference and clean up our memory this way. We also want to say that local storage uh, dot clear. We're going to pull the, pull the local storage dot clear function, which clears out anything that's in local storage. Again, so we don't want to hold that data. Then we're going to finally return. Here's the part of the observable. This dot HTTP, a message. Remember, we use messaging to return a message back that basically says that we're going to process the logouts. And we're going to return a message that says that it happened. Yeah, you're, you're, you're logged out, right? So that's what this does. The first part of the logout is, hey, let's clean up all of our memory and our local storage. We don't want the user to be in memory anymore, right? We don't want to know his information. And then process the logout on the back end, which is like one line of code, right? Logout. And then once the logout is processed on the back end, he's disconnected. There's no sessions open or anything like that. Um, he's off. And then the last thing we want to have is I want to be able to detect when the user is logged in. We can say that if he is logged in, so we'll say logged in, right? Um, I better plug in. I'm, lo I'm, I'm getting low on battery for my little helper. Just a moment. What happens? And I'm fully like all my ports are used. Everything is used, and there's no nothing on the desktop that gives me any kind of power. I love it. Let's see if that's going to give me enough power for the rest of the day. I don't think so. This is not charging. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. We can make we can make do. It's just not providing enough power. I don't know what I don't know what the um, I hate when it does this not charging stuff because I can't tell if um, I can't tell if it's going to kill the battery. I can't tell. It's probably it's probably just made, if I can just maintain what I got for a bit. If not, then we'll take a short break and I'll plug it in. Um. Sorry. Derailed. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. So, so we have this uh, options here, and what? So this is good, but we want to do this logged in stuff. So what logged in is going to check? It's going to return a boolean. That's going to basically tell me that if I'm logged in or not. So it's going it's to return not this dot jwt service dot is token expired part of the, the uh, JWC service, and we're going to compare it with auth token. So we're going to say, hey, take my auth, my auth token and pass it back to this JWC, JWC, blah, JWC service that's going to compare gonna, or, uh, or determine if my token has expired on. If it has, let's say, or it's gone, there is no auth token because we've deleted it, we've logged out, then we can check if the person's logged in or not, right? If it's too long. And they've they've left or they've forgotten uh, themselves being logged in. It'll also uh, show that the person's not logged in. They'll have to log in again. Okay, so that's this part, and that really is for the most part our service. There's nothing really greater uh, in terms of um, uh, you know complexity than that. However, however, we have to also think about like I said to you some of the stuff, some prep we have to do on the app dot module. So whenever we use a service or anything like that, we have to go to the app.module.ts file. And you can see that I've got a couple of uh, one service right now. We have this flash messages module service, right? But we want to have this other service that's going to live in here as well. Two things. I want to include the auth service. I may need to use it somewhere else. So we're going to say that I want to use, again, I'm in the uh, app.module.ts file, right? Right now it's the kind of the core module file. 
I'm going to use auth service, and it's going to come from um, slash services slash uh, auth dot service. I want to go there, and we got to make sure that it's spelled right. This is where it's really good, where TypeScript is really good for type checking and name checking and all that stuff. We also want to import this thing called uh, JW, capital J, JW team module, and also uh, JWT helper service, as well as JWT interceptor. And we want to do that from, from Otho, right? We got, we got that Otho stuff at Auth. O, Angular, AWT, and that's those are the ones we definitely need for now. Uh, we're going to do an off guard service as well, but for now, that's it. We also want to include a way of checking to see if the JWT token is what it is. So we're going to say that uh, we want to export a function that has nothing to do with the class which is a kind of a top level function, which is something that I want to kind of call JW, JWT token getter. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to return from local storage, whenever we call this, the ID underscore token, right, that we stored. So whenever I want to get the token, I can use the JWT token getter uh, function that's built into our app.module. Now, if you're going to say, how the heck did you figure that out? Remember, two weeks? No. Um, so it wasn't something that uh, it was immediately apparent or even intuitive in any way. Uh, but I kind of figured it out. So JWT module is what I want to put in here in imports. Uh, we need to do that. And then for root, OK? And what I want to do for the JWT module is configure the uh, token getter, token getter, which we're just going to use the JWT token getter uh, method we just created. Okay. And that, for the most part, is it. So I'll make sure that I didn't miss anything. Yeah, it looks good. So that ensures that our service, oh yeah, this is draining. Um, that for it ensures our service is going to work. Let's see if I can somehow finagle some additional power from somewhere else. Because otherwise, my friends, I'm going to be in deep trouble. And I don't want that to happen. Because that is just not good. You know, unplug this. Unplug this in for me. Put that in. It does. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but that's okay. As long as I can see, I can do it. We'll have to reposition. Sorry. Gives you guys a bit of a chance to catch up with my craziness. All right. That's fine. That'll work. Um, yeah, so, so we've got, we've got this part here. What I want to do now is I want to go back. So we've kind of created the service and this is the first part, but remember what we're going to be doing is the registration piece. So in order for us to set up the registration, I need, I need to register and log in pages, which we have, right? So if I go back to pages, I'm going to go to register. And I'm going to go into my HTML part for the register. We don't want register works. We want to get rid of this, right? And what I want to do is I want to pull off the stuff that we already have from our views from before when we were using just Express, right, for this stuff. So I'm going to go back in here into my server. I'm going to go into views. I'm going to go into auth. And then there's register. And I'm just going to grab everything all the way down to here, not including the header and footer uh, kind of installation there. So just grab all that. Copy it, and then go all the way to where the register HTML page is and paste it in. Okay, and now I don't need this. This messages link. This is where I had my alerts before. Remember, this is actually this was my flash messages that I had before. 
but now it's kind of componentized, so I don't need that anymore. Please register is good. That's okay. Um, I have my username and all this kind of stuff. I am missing an ng model. Remember, this is the part that I'm going to have to kind of communicate back upwards, which is going to be the username, right? So that's something that user dot username is going to have this ng model stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to do that. I'm also not going to use because this is a form. I'm not going to use the port the the post method. I'm going to use some kind of submit event handler. Uh, for example, something like register submit on register submit. That's probably what it's going to be called. All right, so I'm going to do that. And then on the bottom, this href has to turn into a router link. Here's my router link. And it's going to go back, like it says here, right now when I register, take me back to the uh, main pane, maybe like the home page. Let's put in home. I like to put in that. That's a little bit uh, better than just slash. My name and all that stuff is good. So this is what it's going to look like at the beginning anyway. So very simple page. We already know what it looks like. On that, I know I'm not doing login, but I'm going to just do the same thing, copy-paste operations, because I need to do that anyway. This is just prep. That's why I see it as. I'm going to take the login stuff as well and copy this and go back into the login pages. So here's my login. And go into my login HTML and just populate that in there and do the same cleanup. That I did before. So do one of these, get rid of the post message this is just for the login. And then uh, just down on the bottom, make sure that these links are what it should they should be, which is a uh, router link. Right? And the same thing goes for this one, router link. Oh no. No. Finger typing problems. Okay, all day long. Um, yeah, so that's what's going to take care of this stuff. And this is just going to just be the bare minimum that we need to populate the page so that you look okay. Test that. I'm going to go back to the client, refresh. And if I click logout, it doesn't do anything. It takes me back to the login page, which I can see now. If I click register, I see the register page. It's just HTML, it's nothing, right? And login, I'm going to go back to the login page. Right, so that's what this does. So but it doesn't do anything. If I click this login, it like it doesn't do anything. Cancel should take me back, which it does. And the same thing goes with my registration page. I should be able to cancel and go back. All right, so all those buttons work. I'm pretty good to go. All right, so now that the buttons work, I need to make the front the the uh, code behind file work. I like to call it code behind file. It's not really. It's kind of the code file that's attached to um, you know, it's part of the life cycle. It's attached to the back end, the logic behind everything. The, the controller is what we should be calling it. That's what it is because we're using model view controller uh, framework, right, or uh, design pattern where the view is the HTML file and the model is um, something we've defined, the user model, as an example, and the controller is this code behind file that we keep talking about. All right, so app register, it's going to register, but, again, I need some additional functionality in order for me to uh, to register this thing. So from a register perspective, just a second as I swim through this, I just want to make sure that it's perfect. I know how to do it. It's just I, want, I worry, right, because there's a lot of little pieces to it. So again, I need router. I need flash message servers. I need the auth service, and I need a user, right? So a lot of that I can get right from the constructor function. So remember, in the constructor function, I define my um, dependencies. I use dependency injection here. So I say private, uh, and then I put inside the flash message, which is going to be of type flash message service, right? So then it adds that in. And then I'm going to also include the auth service, auth service which is going to be a type of off, off service. And then I'm also going to need the um, router, which is going to be of type router. So I've got all those, those three in, um, which takes care of most of it. So that takes care of all of this. Like, guys, you can't go wrong with this stuff. It never used to be this way. Uh, this is where I'm super impressed with the Google and, and, and Microsoft guys that they came up with this kind of stuff. 
uh, to make this work, mostly the Google guys. Also, from a user perspective, in just above my constructor, I'm going to say that a user is of type user, right? Which actually in, kind of engages our user up here, right? This is uh, from the uh, registration part. Once I have this these components in place, then I'm mostly halfway there to doing what I need to do. In my ng on init, I'm going to say that this user is equal to a new user. So I'm going to do that. And then um, inside the um, registration, I want to create this, like I said before, some kind of private, uh, actually, let's not make it private, some kind of on register submit method that returns void. OK, so that's this on register submit that I'm going to use, right? And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to authorize. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to do validation. That's not my, my thing right now. This auth service dot register user, right? And I'm going to pass in the user object, this dot user, that I'm going to take in, right? I'm going to subscribe to the results, right? So my, my subscription is going to return a data object or a data container that's going to have some kind of information that I'm going to steal from my previous mo uh, modules, like this one. So I grab this. Uh, it's not a great one, actually. It's not used. To uh, maybe a better one would be the, uh, the contact details one. Sorry. It's just more complete. So there's one. And so I copy that one. And I'm going to go back to the um, registration service. So here we are. And populate that in there. So if I can actually cut and paste. So copy and paste. There we go. All right. So we have on register submit. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a flash message. Now, there is no data message that I've defined for registration. I could. But basically, what we want to do is something like uh, you are now registered and may log in, may, may log in. All right, something like that. Some kind of few, some friendly message that says, hey, you're good. And it's going to take me back, not to the to this, but maybe to the login page. So give the user a chance to go back and log in. Again, in our previous iteration of this, remember, we in the express side, we just made them log in automatically. We can also do that. But I prefer that they log in. The flash message that show, uh, if it's an error, we're going to say a registration error occurred. We're not going to tell them why. So a registration error occurred. Right? Alert danger. We're also going to get them going to get them back to the register page to try again. Maybe they're going to try to put this in. So that's it. That's really on register submit. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's exactly the same pattern over and over again that we've seen today. Um, so this is good. This is all good. But when we go back to the um, the view, here's our view. Um, we have a couple things to do. So one is in our form, we want to do something like on submit. So on the submit, we want to use on register submit. Hi, it came up this time, uh, which is the function that we're going to call when the user presses the submit button. The username, we want to carry it back. And in order for us to do that, we need a ng model, right? So ng model, type that in, and we need to use what it is. And we know it's going to be of type user dot, and you can see how it gives me uh, kind of a friendly thing. Username is what I want to carry back with me. And the same thing goes with my password. So again, ng model, and we're going to say user dot password and email, same thing ng model uh, user dot email and last but not least ng model uh, user dot display name so we got all those things in they're going to come back uh, to us right and it's going to help us register a user right I'm ready to try you how about you no validation though so it could be we could be registering gunk for all we care like there's like literally we can register a blank user and it would work right because we haven't done any validation. Validation is turned off, right? So let's do that. So we're going to go back. Um, we've re reset everything. I'm going to go back to login. And I'm going to click on register. And I'm going to register our user. We're going to call them uh, Thomas. Why not? Here he is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Let's see if the user's already registered. I already registered them this morning, so this should fail. Um, we'll say an email of Thomas at example.com. And display name will be Tom. Thomas. Sir. If I click register, it should give me an error, right? Didn't do anything. That's scary bad, right? So that means either it didn't work. And unfortunately, see what it just did? It went like pop up and it came back. I got nothing. That's not a great result. That's not, not what I want, okay? And of course, the way to check that is uh, two ways. One way is let's check the back end. So again, if I go back to my files, control and back tick, um, what I want to do is uh, this is the back end. I want to check one out on another little uh, split, split it again. And this split, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into my Mongo database. So Mongo, here it is. And I want to show DBS. So there's my database with test. So I want to uh, use test. I want to show collections. I want to uh, db. Uh, users dot find dot pretty. I only I know I have them from the beginning from this morning, so I should be able to see at least one in there, not two. So there's Thomas, and yeah, that's the only one. So that it didn't work, but it also didn't error out. Well, I'm saying it just. Try to do a oh, register user itself. Yeah. The, the the service doesn't exist. Hmm. Well, we can try and see what what happened, right? That's for sure. Um, let's see if we get an error. So we, we didn't get an error. I didn't get an error here, right? Because if I was to get an error in ng serve, it would come up like right here, right? So this is the ng serve part. Um, oh, I do. Here it is. That's good. That's good. That's a good error to get, right? Because that means if you and I got the same error, guess what? It's my fault, <laughs> right? I like it. It's my fault. My fault is good. My fault is very good. So, okay, on top of auth services, register users. So that's easy to fix. We can look at um, the auth service. Let's go back. So we can go here, and we can look at the auth service, right? So, again, I'm looking at services, right? I'm looking at the... Sorry, auth.service, and we have a registered user. We should have a registered user uh, object, you register user, here it is, public, right? And just to make sure, let's see if it's spelled correctly, because maybe that's a problem. It's usually something silly that we've done or that I forget to do. So again, what I want to look at is the two. It says that error said so, okay um register user register user does not exist on type off off service okay so here's off service here's register user so tell me What are you talking about? Yeah, no, this is all good. <laughs> this is exactly what we did before. So register user, the reason we'll be able to find it is because we were able to go to register user itself and return an observable of type any, right? So again, let's take a look at that. I think the first thing I like to do is, is check my class. This is why I have my notes, because if I don't, it's like it could be one thing or another um, that's part of our problem. Um, so let me just take a look at that really quickly. Again, this is what happens when you're live coding. Anything is possible. Finger typing errors, so on. Um, so I'll just, let's check my, I'm just going to do a cross check of everything just really quickly so I can see if I can detect the problem. 
So HTTP client headers, regular community common, observable JWT helper service. That looks good from Auth0 Angular JWT. Import user from Auth models user. That's good. We're good to go. Auth service is user. We have a user and we have an auth token. The private, oh, this is good. Private endpoints, private HTTP options. Um, our constructor has a private HTTP client as well as a private JWT service. Lowercase with it uses it consumes the JWT helper service. Good. This user is equal to a new user. We're all good. We public register user. There it is. Public register user is of type user and it re re returns an observable of type any, which returns this dot HTTP post any this dot endpoint, and then plus register. We pass in the user to register and this dot HTTP options. Yeah, that's all good, guys. So that's not, it's not a problem here. Sorry? Yeah, it could be. But I'm saying, I what I do is I check. Uh, and also, I also check here. Sometimes what happens is something is not saved. Like, it looks like everything is saved. Because otherwise, I wouldn't. So the next part is the register component. Let's take a look at that. And then I'll check the, uh, um, the app module. So now I'm going to go to the register component and check there. So under the pages register. By the way, I did this this morning, and it worked flawlessly. Just it is what it is, right? Uh, flash messages service, we got that. We got the router, we got the auth service. Auth service from services auth service. Yay, okay, user, we got this app models user. Um, the components, which are using these components here. Um, export class is register component, which implements on init. Uh-huh, that looks all good. Router, flash messages, auth service. And then we do the on register submit, where we use the auth service to register a user, which is this user, subscribe to the data. If the data is successful, we say you are now registered, may log in and re 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 redirect them. Otherwise, we say you can't. It's exactly the same. Yes. Sorry? We add the data in the user inside the form, right? So the data in the user gets added in uh, right here. So if I go to the form itself, that's a good question. Let's check that too. I don't think I made a mistake there. This is where you know I, I know what to do, but um, so autocomplete is off. We use submit with on register submit, which is exactly what I did. Uh, user dot username is correct because you're going to get username itself. Username is part of user, right? Uh, ng model is what we're using. We're doing the same thing with username user dot password. We're doing the same thing with user dot email and user dot display name. We're doing all that the same, and then we're going to go home. So there's no problem here, and there's no problem in the registration page. Which leads me to think that. There's two possibilities. One, I need to kick off my server again. Possible, right? The other one, more, more likely, is it's some more problem in here, app module, right? So the auth service is dark, which means it's not being used. I am using the JWT module itself, and I am injecting it in here. So I don't see where the problem is, truly. I did. It's automatic, actually. So here's what to do. So what I would first try, because that doesn't make any sense, uh, is I would be control backtick and just uh, control C here, and then uh, ng serve. I think it's important to do that sometimes. Uh, most of the time, it's pretty good. You know, I don't have a problem. And I might be missing something. Like, it's also going to point out where in my code it is that's causing a problem. Right. 
So this looks good. So it's compiled okay. But then when I go to register my user, which is here, let's try registering like a real user, like admin. So I don't have an admin. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll say admin at example.com. And the display name would be admin, capital A, register. Because this is a bad situation. And now nothing happened. Look, in break. But also when I click register, nothing happened. This is actually not bad. Let's take a look at what it tells me in the inspector. Aha. OK. So undefined register, 4,200. Failed to load resources. The server responded with a status of 404. 4,200. Undefined register. Um, it could be a route. Could be a route thing, right? Let's see. Because register, process register. But the funny thing is it didn't break. Right? Oh yeah. That's why I'm I'm surprised. What about on the front end? What happened on the front end? Did we get any kind of 404 error? So let's close off this one. This one here. Let's close this one off because I don't care about this one anymore. And I do get a note of what this one is. So contact list, I never actually went to the register page. Look, because if I went to the register page, I would have it here, right? And to do this, let's just reboot the server on the back end, right? So this is the back end server. Um, and let's just do that again. Let's press the button, and I want to see what happens here on the front end. So I click the button, and then it goes, gives me this error. Localhost 4200, undefined register, 404 not found. Undefined register. So it's trying to go somewhere and add something in the front, like a path. That's what it's trying to do. It's trying to register a path. Um, and it says here, look, it says register username Thomas. Oh, this is what the problem is. Yeah, that shouldn't be. You shouldn't be able to see that at all, right? It's like it's not stopping the um, default, uh, the default workings of the of the form. That means that actually where it is something silly is inside of, let's close all these off just to make sure. I'm going to go back to my register component, which is this. And I want to check the top of the form again. Did I forget to do something? So this is where the form is on register submit, which would stop the thing from going forward, right? That should stop it from moving. And then I register an input. So I'm going to say that saved because this is what it should do. So what it should do is it should come here and then on register submit, right? As soon as it's done submitting, it should go back and it should stop the thing from submitting. Notice that there, I'm not using a – for it to send user information across the URL, which means that the form itself is trying to submit. shouldn't happen. It should be going to here to the on register submit. So back to the thing on register submit. I'm telling you guys, something really dumb. On register submit, we go to the auth service. This? No, no. Register user. Sorry, what were you saying? Go to where? No, your register component. Okay, this part, yeah. yeah. That's correct. That's just this. That's that's another thing. That's, a, that's the undo button. Could be, like in the router router, you mean? Like in the router, this part? No, no, sorry, the router, which is this part. Um, maybe. Goes to the register component. The title is register. Let's take a look at that. So that should be the exact way. I didn't I didn't do that differently this morning. Um yep. nope. It's exactly the same. 
component, register components, data, title, register, all the same stuff. And services here, I don't need anything but these. I'm not using an auth guard right now, so I'm just having components in here, which is all these pages. So that's pretty much like good. That's not bad at all, this stuff here, which log in and log out. Router, router module works perfectly fine. And I'm just going to try this out again. I'm going to go to refresh. So try again. So it's min. I want to see what it does again. So see how this has this information inside of it? I wonder if, if I go back to products and go back to um, login and then press register. I'm going to try and maybe it just had some old information in there. Like I'm talking about, I mean, I, I couldn't clear it out. Maybe that was it. So I'm going to try this out again and say like, uh, okay, I want to put Thomas in there and uh, password one, two, three, four, five, six, Thomas at sample.com. Please watch my URL. This shouldn't happen if I get anything in the URL. Thomas. And then if I click on this button, okay, this is good. So I don't get the URL stuff anymore which is good, but it's trying to do this local host colon 4200 undefined register. It says status text not found. So HTTP headers, status 404. It's like I can't get this to this, to this. It's actually a routing issue because there is no undefined register. There is no register like local host 47, you know, undefined register. Maybe it's the auth service again. Let's go back to the auth service. Maybe I, I, I put that in wrong. Could be. This is good. So I'm checking the, making sure this is right. So this is good. So if I register, let's try doing it with uh, Postman first of all. So Postman, 4200 is gonna give me the problem, but let me just, I'm just curious. Troubleshooting. This is what I'm saying. It's trying to finish by 5:30. Is like impossible. Um, yeah. So yeah. So what I want to do is I want to use so in the contact list. So this again, Postman for those people who don't remember is a little tool we can use to check uh, to do little requests without a, a without an interface, right? So if I click send, I can get the list. This is my list right now, Peter Parker, uh, and so on. Uh, one thing I can't get because I don't have an interface that gives me uh, routers, but what or servers, but I can't do the other part. I can do um, the register, so I can click on post. I know that it's a post type. I know it's a post type, right? Sorry, just checking. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Is, that, is, it, is it? It's something really dumb, and and it's like it's really bugging me. I'm, I'm telling you, it's something like that. It, we're, we've missed completely, and it's right in front of our eyes. And probably on the video, they're like, it's right there, man. Right? Yeah. People, are, people already know what it is, but they don't know. Um, anyway, so in the body, we can look at, um, you know, raw uh, value in the body. And notice it's an application. So what I can do in the body is simulate what it would be like to have an object that I want to send forward, right? So I know what I have as a user object. So in my set of API contact list, it's API register, right? That's the local host API register. I want to pass in an object. The object is going to have a username, which is going to be uh, Thomas. So we'll make it admin, right? And uh, we'll say the uh, password we're not going to send in. Password is going to be generated, right? Uh, but we're going to do the no. We'll actually send the password. Password will be one two three four five six. Um, I believe it has to be one two three four five six here like this. Username, password, email, which is uh, uh, admin at sample dot com. I'm just I'm just checking. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and then I want to put the display name in here and it's going to be admin there's admin right and then um if i click on send this should be taken as the body of the form 
that we were to submit. Now notice I've clicked on raw and JSON application in order for you to make that. Plus it has to be post and the proper API it has pointed. So I'm gonna check if that's the case. So send. Okay, cool. It said it did it. Um, let's see what my response was. So um, it didn't give me a negative. It's a success true. Look, user registered successfully. So that was my response. So then if I go back to check it, and if I look at my MongoDB, so I go Mongo. I, I want to check to see if, the, if my API works the way I think it should be, and, it, and I think it will. Actually, this actually gives me an extra thing. I think I've terminaled out. Did that. Too many. Most likely. We'll just do it here. Okay. We'll just do it with our terminal. I'm 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 pretty uh thing. I'm terminal out. Like I am terminal out. Like I it's really bizarre. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is good. This is this is fantastic. So yeah, none of this is working. So that points to another problem. That points to maybe it's not an application error, it's a, a you know uh me error. Like I need to reboot um uh, thing. I need to reboot this whole thing. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just get right out of. Uh, I'm gonna get out of this whole thing. I'm gonna just stop MongoDB. So stop this and stop this, and that way I will restart um, my terminal and see if that helps. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to, you know, restart the application or do something because this is a problem. This is this would be a real issue with me that I've locked it up. So let's just get out of Visual Studio Code and we'll get out of this for a second and just make sure that nothing else is running that I don't need. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes we get some stuff that's going on uh, that's running. I'm just gonna force quit on these things here so we can do that without losing our connection. I'm also gonna force quit on uh, code just to make sure that that's close, close. Not great to do, but you know, and same thing with iTunes. I don't need iTunes. All right, let's try that out now. We should be able to start terminal. Get the terminal. If not, that's good. That's a good sign. Terminal came back. So now let's go back to do this again. So we'll go back to VS Code. This looks good. I'm gonna run a terminal, a couple of terminal sections sessions again. I know I'm I'm blasting my computer, right? Got like four or five terminal sessions at the same time. Um oh yeah, now it's really coming back. Look at that memory utilization. Um so I'm gonna go with uh, you know nodemon for the server, it's gonna error out because there's no Mongo database, pseudo MongoD. Yeah, and then I can just restart this. And it's connected. We're good. So this is this part. Uh, then I'll add in uh, ng serve on the back end. Cd clients. Sorry, just I probably just tax the system. Who knows? Ng serve, and that should redo everything on forty two hundred. We're good. And now let's register a new user. So we're going to go to see what happens when I, I'm going to actually uh, kill some of these uh, connections, right? I'll leave this up and I'll go to uh, localhost 3000, make sure that works. That's good. I haven't pushed to that yet. I should, but let's go to uh, 4200. There we go. And then go to our login, register, and then type in something else like, I don't know, John and our password, one, two, three, four, five, six, John at example.com and um, John Doe. Sure. And now let's see if I have what happens to a register. So nothing happens. Still have the same problem. And let's go into inspect and see if it didn't kill me on the console. This is good. So this is like, that responded to server with a status 404, undefined register. And here's my HTTP error. It says core. And now uh, did it crash my system? 
Nope. Undefined register. Are you getting the same problem? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to move on. Not for any reason. I'm going to come back, but I'm going to move on to the, the to the login. So what I normally do when I run into this error is, I mean, I can hack at it for a while, but I'm going to put the login uh, in there as well to see if I can get that going, and then it might lead me give me some hints as to what I'm doing wrong with the register. So. You know, some troubleshooting, right? I mean, that's what it is. So let's make the login service work, and I'll figure it out. So again, go back to login. I've got my login thing here. We've taken away that part. What I want to do here is make sure that the service is complete. So I'm going to um, – because I don't want to waste my waste your time, guys. We're, we're not going to finish it all. Clients. And I know that it's not easy to go through this when you see this because – it's like, you know, watching paint peel it sometimes, you know, kind of like, what can we do? How come it's not easy to find? And it's not just, it's just the way it is. Um, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, you think you, you're supposed to be, it's supposed to be easy, but it's not. So let's do the following. Let's go and do our constructor. I'll start with that one instead. I'll say private. We'll do some dependency injection here. Private uh, flash message, which will be of type flash message service. There we go. And then we're also going to include uh, the auth service, so private. And this is where you were seeing, uh, Ryan, auth service being lowercase. That's what I want it to be, right? Auth service, whereas the real service is the auth service. See? And then um, private router, but good observations again. Router is of type router, right? These are the same things that I've done before. And then we're going to do the um, ng on init. I want to make a user. So this dot user is equal to new user. Right? So again, I'm using the user object. Right? Why is this component erroring out now? I'll be okay. I meant to say something. I'm getting tired too. Uh, no, it's true. When you when you do this enough, long enough at uh, once, like four hours in a row, user. I meant to do that. I meant to do that here. I was looking at it ahead, and I wanted to do this. This dot user is equal to new user. Finger tapping. Finger tapping problems. So that does that. Um, and then once I have that, I want to create that uh, uh, on login submit, which is just exactly the same pattern we've been using the whole time, which is returning void. Maybe we shouldn't return void, but whatever. Wow. Wow, <laughs> guys. There we go. Uh, on login submit. And then what we're going to say is that this dot auth service dot uh, authenticate user, we we'll pass in the this dot user, and when we pass in this dot user dot subscribe, and we're going to pass in uh, data where the data message is going to come back. That's what this does. So we're passing in this dot user on login submit, and let me just see something for a second now that I've typed that one in. Yeah, I'll take this part for a second. And type this. Data success, flash message. Um, it'll say something like the data message, whatever that is. So I do have a data message for the login port process. It'll say something like, you know, login failed or something. Um, data dot message. It's going to take the user, uh, let's say we'll take him to home when he's logged in or she's logged in. Um, 
And we'll also do a data message here with alert danger, and it's going to take them back to login if they fail to log in. Okay, so that's that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so that's this part, login on login submit. We've got a user, user object, and we're going to go now to the um, login component.html. And the login component.html is going to do the same kind of thing that we had before. So here at the form, the top of the form, we're going to say submit. On submit, we're going to say on login submit, which is what's going to happen there, right? And then um, we're going to do an ng um, model. And the ng model is going to be user.username. And there's going to be another one for password, right? So we're going to say ng model um, user.password. We're going to go to the, the router link is going to be register, which is register here. Uh, and this will take you home. Because that's where we want to go. Submit won't submit. It's going to just log, log in. The value will be login. And the value is canceled. This is all good to go. I think it's ready for logging in. All right, let us try and do this thing. So we're going to go back. I'm going to go back to login. Let's keep this open and see what happens. And we'll say that we already defined a Thomas user with one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll see if we can log in. Hmm. Same error. So I know now it's neither one or the other. 100%. Because register and login are almost identical when it comes to doing stuff, right? And I didn't change anything from the way I did it before. One thing that it did say was that undefined login, right? That's what I'm getting, post undefined login. And it's telling me that the, let's take a look at more of details of what it's saying. Um, Servable subscribe, handle error, global zone aware check. It's almost like the, I'm missing something. Four and 404 status text not found. Status text not found in the HTTP header. So I'm getting HTTP headers back. And what are the what's the HTTP error response? Undefined login. And back from here. Hmm. It's like the auth services doesn't like to play. It's not playing today. No, I don't know. I'm telling you, it's the exact same code. Here, I'll show it to you from uh, this morning. So let's go to this morning's code. That totally worked, right? So GitHub, if you want to take a look at it yourself. Actually, it's a good thing for one of you guys to do that are watching, right? Um, as a watcher, you can see that this is the code that I used last time. So here's my client code. Here's my source code, my app. And here's my... Um, App module, let's just check my app module for a second. So this is the exact same way. So the forms, app writing module, footer, all the service component and register component, login component, flash, JWT auth service from auth.service. I did that, right? And then I did this local storage stuff and services components, flash message and JWT for the getter. And I did not include it, yeah. So that doesn't look like, I miss what it was before. And this is what I have now. So I'm just checking the modules that I have one more time. So this is app.module. So so I know, sorry about this guys, but I wanna make sure that it's nothing wonky that I'm not doing wrong. Uh, JW helper service, auth service from Services that auth service. Wow, man. And flash module message. Usually, something like this, um, it happens at the uh, at the module level, like where I get some standard error like that over and over again. Jake token getter. That looks like it's pretty good for root. Sorry, services. Just check. I mean, all I'm doing is checking, cross check, and see what I've got in one is the same as what I got in another. All right. So this looks, the module part looks all good, like this part here. So this is nothing that I can see that jumps out at me that's saying you did something wrong. 
right? Um, the other thing was that we were checking the route. So I know I did the routing the same. So let's take a look at that one as well. So that would be under uh, the, not this part. That would be under the app routing module. So this is the app routing module that I had today. Uh, I mean, now with you guys. And let's see, because that, that's, I mean, it could be that, but it seems unlikely, but you never know. App routing module. So logging component, page not found, contact, contact lists, contact lists. These are all done. So let's just put them together so we can compare apples and apples. Register, register component, register component. Uh, data title register, data title login, login components, log out components, redirect to login, patch match full. It's all the same. Identical. Unless you guys see something I don't, I don't see it here. So it's not this. So here we're good. Um, details component register and login components are here. Routes and router module is the top. Routes and router module is the top. And now let's check out services. So let's go to the auth service. Sorry, guys. I know it's I know it's uh, really annoying, and I do apologize. But uh, you should probably get to the bottom of this, right? So it's like, um, okay, so let's start with our services, which is our auth service. Auth service, so injectable, client service, head observable, GWT, helper service from auth JWT, users models, root, auth token, button and root, auth token, any user, user, localhost 3000 slash API, exactly the same. HTTP options are copy paste. Structure, GWC service helper, user, the new user. All right, and then register user. What did I do different here? Public register user observable any. This endpoint register. This, that endpoint register. This doesn't, is not a problem. HTTP post, authenticate user, 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 store, store user. We never can get here. We didn't do, we can't get to, um, Authenticate or this through this service, store user data, logout. So the actual code that I wrote is exactly the same. Unless you guys can see something I don't, not this JWT is token expiring in this authentication. All right, so the service looks good. Just doing a cross check and I'm just going to go into um, pages Let's go into login first. It doesn't seem to be the right thing. In the constructor of login, the constructor, this one? Well, the contact has nothing to do with it. Contact now is done. Contacts. Give me time. Login. That's a different thing. Uh, let's try. Let's try this thing. So, again, uh, let's. What are we looking at? Login. Yeah, this is the login component. I'm just looking at the login component first. So, login component. Ts and messages. Auth service. Angular router. App models. Login component HTML, CSS, user, user, private, flash message, auth service, router. Look, identical, guys. Users, auth service. That's why I use that stuff. Authenticate user. Um, data, if data success. Data message show home and login, and that shouldn't do a darn thing anyway. Identical. You can see it for yourself. So what if, and this is where it gets pretty hairy, but what if, what if, what if, what if it's my problem? 
like my computer problem. Yeah, you are. That's the thing. You are getting the same error. But um, what if we try something different? So ng build minus minus prod. I want to see what I get on the production side. Maybe I'll get different. Um, I'll get a different set of errors that can help me, that can guide me. So it's not really telling me what it is. This is good. There we go. Property on details page submit is private and only accessible within the class contact details component. Okay, I don't think that should affect me. Didn't affect me, but I'm happy with any kind of error at this point, right? <laughs> I want an error. I do, I, do, I totally want an error. So this is in the contact details component data HTML. This again, nothing to do with what we're doing here, but okay. Contact details component. That's up here. Dot HTML. And that's in the contact details thing here. This. Right? Uh, void. And this should be just this. That's the problem. That's why it didn't like that. Okay, so let's do that again. Prod. I hope it catches something else like that. Again, it's a different kind of parsing maybe than the serve. I'm also gonna try do the prod without, um, uh, sorry, the build without a prod just like by itself. Sometimes it gives us other map files that can help us associate the problem a little bit more. But I'm just curious, I don't care about budgets. I'm just curious what happens when we use it directly. Because then, the, then it's not my, my machine, it's like, it's, this, it's like the server itself, right? So let's run it and see what happens, right? So log in, localhost 3000, there we go. And I want to log in, and I want to use, sure, I'll use that problem. Log in. Okay, so now what's the problem? So expect console. Okay, so this is undefined login 404. So the load read, the server responded with a status of 404 not found. And then I get an error T in main. So it is definitely an error that we're getting here. Localhost 3000 undefined login. Undefined login. Maybe it's a server problem. Maybe it's a server problem. So what am I getting on the server side? Yeah, here it is, look. So that is different. Undefined login slash post i'm post i'm posting to undefined login i'm posting to undefined login undefined login oh no oh okay i i think i got an idea in my mind where this is going so let us that's the wrong one. Let us go back to services, for example. Go to the contact list service, no, the auth service. And let's take a look here. So I'm getting an undefined plus login. That's what's happening. It's almost like, it's almost as if my endpoint, this private endpoint is undefined. And of course it would be, guys. Of course it would be. Look what I got here. Here's the error. Do you see it? What do you see? Do you see the error? 3, you see the error. It's not 3,000. I see it. It's clear as day. It's dumb. I told you it was dumb. Huh? What is that? There's a colon. It's supposed to be an equals. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
No, but this is the thing, guys. This is the thing. It's so stupid. I didn't catch it even when I read through the code a couple times. It's so subtle because private endpoint is the way it is. If I do this now, okay, bear with me. Let's let's prove it out. It happened in both my – here's where it led me down the road. And this is where I wanted to do the build because the build actually gave me a response on the server side, right, for some reason. So this is where my, my thoughts went. My thoughts went, it's happening on both sides. You copied my code, so it's happening with you, right, because you're watching me. You're watching me follow my code, so it's happening with you, right? And then it didn't complain because TypeScript, what it's trying to do is trying to associate the endpoint with some random type, whatever this type would be, right? It's typing it. Colon is a type, not an assignment statement. And this is why we shouldn't do it here. We should do this assignment statement somewhere else. Anyways, uh, to prove this out, to show you that this is the case, it's a happy good thing. It's a happy good thing. We found the problem. I'm okay with finding problems. I'm not a good thing. I'm not good when, uh, when I, I would bust my brains after this. I would leave and go, why did it not happen? I would be really mad. But we found out what the problem was. That's not a problem. It's a silly error. A little bit hard to spot because of the, how the size of it, like physically, visually hard to spot. Uh, but it's good. So now let's test it to see if I'm right. So here we're good. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to uh, ng serve again, which, again, I mean, I mean, you know, you use the tools that you've been given, guys, as much as you can, right? I mean, sometimes... Uh, that's part of the error. Like you, you bust your brain, you can't figure it out, and it's something silly. Um, also, you know, going at it for a long time, pounding at it for a while is not always successful. Like what I just did may have not been successful. What I might have tried next, copy paste from what I had on GitHub. Copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. Did it work? Wait a minute. What now? Compare. Do a diff between the two files, and then it would have pointed it out. Um, okay, so let's check this out and see if it's if it's right. So again, let's perform the login. So I'm not going to do it here because that's that's on on the 3000 now. I want to do it on this. So let's do first the login that we have. We know that Thomas exists. We should get a positive login result. Should. Oh, we should. I said, right? We. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what we, what the error was that I got. No error. The thing that gets me is the is the lack of response, like I wanted. That's good. Okay, uh, now we'll log out. We can't log out, actually. We have no way of logging out. How about register? We can register someone, though. Let's register John Doe, like I tried to already. John uh, Doe, so password 123456. Email is john at example.com. Meet that stuff. And then John Doe. And then click register. See if that works. Registration. Good. This is good positive science, guys. Let's register the same user again. Let's register Thomas again. It should get an error. Now I want the error. So Thomas, password one two three four five six. Email Thomas at example.com. And display name is Thomas. We should get an error. Right? This is a good response. These are good positive responses. It's working. Okay. Good. So now we've done both registration and login. So uh, how do I register that? So I did all this work, did some troubleshooting. And sometimes, you know, this is the great the great thing about uh, coding I want to share with you guys. It's not a straight journey. Um, sometimes what happens is it can be creative and it can be frustrating. But you got to keep on keeping positive and knowing that you know what you know and move on. Here we're going to say something like added register register and login, right? Closes number four and closes, I don't know if it would work, number five. Let's see if it can do both. Um, push, if not, I'll just push them along. All right, let's go back to this. And did it close or not? Maybe not. Did. So I close them both off, right? Log in and register. You can see four and five got closed, right? Which is pretty cool. I can close them both in one line. Um, and now I have, I'm only going to do um, log out. 
because uh, one thing I need to do is log out. So I'm going to pull this over here in my progress. There's no way. I, I knew this was going to be hard to do uh, because it requires more time. We're sitting at 517 right now, as I suspected, beyond the regular troubleshooting. It just takes too long. So I'm just going to try and do log out. So next week, here's the plan. When I do log out, it's going to take a minute. But um, next week, uh, a couple things to remi remind you of. There is going to be, please look at the uh, uh, assignment. I'll be posting it today. Again, it'll be an angularized version of your code that I want you to start on, which is the angularized version of your uh, um, portfolio site that you've already made from, from assignment one. I want you to just start incorporating Angular in there. Use my code. All right, start going. Uh, or use my code examples, what I mean. Like, go up and use that the way I'm doing it. Um, and next week, you'll be getting your, uh, your group assignment. OK, so let's take a look at this and see if I can make this work in short order. So I don't think it's going to be that difficult. So the login, the logout service and is related to something that I'm going to be doing with the, um, uh, if you notice, the logout happens on the header. And that's OK, because inside of the header, that's inside of pages, uh, the partials, in partials, in the header. That's where I want it to happen. So what I've done so far in the header is basically I don't have anything to do with my service or anything like that, uh, my user service. I need to include my auth service in the header now. I need to do that. And uh, that's no problem. That's going to help me do a couple things. Uh, make my navigation smart a little bit, which is something that I want to do. OK, so. And I've kind of built this in from last time when I when I first did this. So going back, I need a router. I need the flash message service. I need the auth service. And I need a user. So I need all those things in here. And I'm going to inject a lot of that right here in the constructor. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go into uh, private uh, flash message. Uh, it's going to be of type uh, flash message service, this one. I'm also going to do private um, auth service. Oh, that auth service. And then auth service. I know, I'm, I'm still miffed. Uh, private router, which is of type router. And I definitely have that in there. I also want a user object, which I'm going to carry forward, user, which is of type user. That kind of gives me everything I need to get going on this one. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to create a, uh, I want to update on ng on it, on init. What I want to do is I want to say this uh, dot uh, user is equal to a new user, like we've done before. Uh, this dot user, I also want to do something like json dot parse. Uh, because the user should be logged in, user storage dot get item. And then I want to look at the user object that I've stored in local storage. Now, if it doesn't exist, it's going to be empty, right? The user object will be empty. Um, however, if he does exist, uh, then we're going to get back something that's a little bit more detailed. So then what I want to do now is I want to do a couple of things on logout. When I logout click, when I click the logout button, I want to capture that. So I want to kind of intercept intercept the logout. Remember, that's what uh, Angular does. It intercepts the stuff. I want to use the auth service to log out. I want to pass in uh, the nothing. So I want to just do subscribe to the user. It, just, it logs out everybody. It doesn't, doesn't matter what the user is. It doesn't, it's not user specific, so that's why it's so easy. And then what I want to do for this one is I want to say that this dot flash message uh, dot show. I want to pass in the data dot message that says thank you. You've logged out. I also want to color it a little bit with a CSS class that's using uh, alert warning because even though I've logged out sex successfully, you're still logging out. And with a timeout of about five thousand milliseconds, so that we can see it. Okay, so that's the flash message. And then this dot router dot navigate. I want to navigate back to the login page, right? Because if you've logged out, then you should be able to go back to the login page view, you know, to show you that you've logged out. There we go. So that's this. Also, I want to check if is logged in, because if the user's logged in, then I want to provide uh, an, a way of detecting 
this.pothservice.logged in, logged in. So this, this detects whether the user is logged in or not. So this, this is what these things do. It's pretty straightforward. So it's logged in, checks the auth services if it's logged in. This on logout basically does like it subscribes. Again, it goes back to the flash message, shows that I've, I've, I've logged out and we're good to go. And then what I want to do, the last part for today, is on my header component, we want to modify my nav bar a little bit. Two things are going to happen here. I have this area that I've, I've unchecked that I want to add in. And I can also check to see that, first of all, I'm only going to show the log out or log in buttons if one or the other. If I'm logged in, I want to show the log out button. So I can say something like, and here's a, a Angular directive, I can say, ng if, if, and then I want to look at is logged in, right, which I can check. That's just a function. If I'm logged in, then show the logged out, right? Similarly, ng if, and then I can say that not is logged in. I'm not logged in, then log me in. Show me a logged in button. So this is what this does. At the same time, I can take these away. And I can show a couple things here. Uh, one is these got to be replaced by uh, double curly braces as opposed to one of these. So it's not going to be display name. It's going to be, of course, user.display name, right? That's what's going to happen here. So the user.display name says, hey, welcome, user, right? But of course, I'm only going to show this if the user's logged in. And this is where my little bug came from on my own site um, is equal to. Oops, is logged in, right? So if the user's logged in, I'm going to show this this uh, list item, and then I'm going to display the user's name. Hello, user. One thing I also did was, if I'm not wrong, I changed some of the CSS to make it green and give it a little bit of spacing. So I want to add that in there too. So that is, it's kind of okay. I mean, I kind of like it a little bit more. So instead of just navbar text, I also said that I want text success. So I want green text. Text danger, red text. Uh, ML-5, which means I want margin left of 5 and a margin right of 5, as well as I want that uh, the display is none and then the display is inline. So I want to be able to do that. That's going to be the to set up so it looks nice. That's what this does. And then in the logout, I want to insert intercept the logout click to say that uh, the click is on logout, right? So it's happening right before the router link. It doesn't matter where it is actually, but I want to do a click event that says that uh, on logout click, and this will handle the logout click event, okay? Yeah. All right, so we can be able to see that now. If I go back to client, I should be able to see if I'm logged in, I should be able to log in. I see that I'm only log in is available, but not log out, which means somehow I've logged out. All right, let's log in. So log in, I'll use Thomas, one, two, three, four, five, six, and log in. Okay, logged in successfully, but I don't see this, and I don't see the logged in. Okay, what's the problem? Let's inspect. And let's look at the console. No nope, console errors, but um, here's the thing. What The other thing we can do is we can also look at the application. And we can see that in my application, I don't have in local storage any storing stuff happening. I'm not storing remember my key value and all that stuff because when I've logged in, the login part has not completed that part. I haven't user stored. I have to call that somewhere. And I remember not calling at any time, right? What I mean by that is if you look at the, the even though I thought it was done, our login is, is not completely done properly. So if I go back to, this is where the testing, the testing column would have been great. So I'm going to test through it, make sure that it's working. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing now so that I missed it. But if you go to the login, right? And if I look at the login component, I'm doing the auth service authenticate user. Yeah, this is nice, but there's nowhere where I'm getting the, um, where I'm actually using the, the login service properly. So 
What I mean by that is I remember distinctly, remember distinctly, guys, one more, a few more minutes, please bear with me and then I'll be done and I'll be out of your hair and you don't have to worry about me anymore. But I'll be happy that this is done for you guys and recorded properly. So if you look at the login page, everything is good. But what I've what's supposed to happen when you log in uh, is you're, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, on success, not only do you, you do this, but one thing that we missed on login submit is in here in my data success, uh, we want to do this dot auth service dot store user because we don't store user data, then it's not going to be stored, and then we're not going to know that we're logged in. We want to pass in the data dot token as well as the data dot user, which should uh, satisfy all of our requirements. Okay? That's, the, that's the part we were missing right here on line twenty nine. All right, so. Uh, where is this coming from? This is coming from the services auth uh, auth service, right? So this one. And what's happening is without doing this local storage, I never get an ID stored or a user stored. And if I don't have a user stored, I can't read the user in my component for the navigation bar. And therefore, it looks like I'm always logged out. OK, so let's do that again. So going back to this. Take a look at this. This is where the application is going to store the local storage stuff, right? It's almost like a little data store. So again, I'm going to go back to log in, put the name in now this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, and click login. And now we should see this. And that's not good, but it's better than what we had before, right? So now let's check. So we're going to go back into uh, inspect. And I want to see the application. And now you can see that the user is here with the display name is Thomas Smith. I should see Thomas Smith up there. Um, the username is Thomas, the email, and this is the bearer token that I was talking to you about. It's a massive token. It's pretty lar large. So I think it's 256 characters. So it's quite difficult to crack, right? Um, anyways, so, but it's clear text, which is also bad. I'm also getting these four errors. And you can see that I've got some errors on the console it says error type error cannot read property display name of null display name of null well this is because um, what I'm trying to do in my header component that HTML is I want to say user dot display name here but in my header component of this there's nowhere that I'm actually defining what the user is I'm saying the user is a new user and I'm getting the item user from the from local storage, yes, right? And this is happening before the user's logged in. So this is what's causing me to have a problem, right? And once I have a user, user has, remember, it's a, it's a type user. We know user has a user a display name feature, right? But um, you know, when I'm logged in, I, I haven't done that yet, so therefore I can't do it. So let's just check that service uh, because I think that's part of it. And then we're done, guys. Yes, so auth service, the new user, we're storing the user, and we're not getting the user. We're getting, we're, we're, we're trying to get item from the user and set the user on init, right? So whatever that user is, json.parse, local storage, get item user, but we're somehow we're not able to read the user data from local storage. Right, that's what's happening. That's what the problem is that we're encountering. So let's just see what that looks like, and that's in the uh, partials header header component. That ts. By the way, this went way way better in my trials. <laughs> I do apologize. It looks. Don't be afraid. People are afraid. They're like, oh my god, I got to get this done by myself now. And Tom struggled. It's not that I want to struggle. It's just you got to take it easy and uh, and not panic because it's uh, you know silly errors um, that do this thing local storage get item and it's user and then the auth service and is logged in and what did I do that's messed up logged in.
get item user. Of course, it's perfect, like always. It looks perfect to me in my eyes, right? But it doesn't mean that it is perfect to me in my eyes. Flash message show auth service on logout. OK, well, let's log out and see if there's a problem logging out. So log out, logged out successfully. Um, let us refresh this page. Let's do this again. I'm going to look at this because we know that we're everything's working. Like the logging out and logging out is fine. It's just that there was a bit of an error up top here, which is fine. I want to find what the problem is. So I'm going to go admin. We know there's a min user. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then press enter. OK, so we say welcome. We're still getting admin. Here's the bearer token. We're getting all this good stuff. It's something very stupid, I'm sure. But here is the information. We're getting user. The display name is admin with a capital A. Username is admin. And then so we'll be able to, we got the user, the user information. So let's take a look at the HTML. So the HTML is the header component that HTML, where user.display name is coming down here. All right. Why, oh, why would it be doing this now? So what about if I just said just user, user dot, yeah, let's just let's make sure it's not me typing something weird. Let's say user dot username. Let's say, if, uh, see if I can get that uh, as opposed to the display name. Yeah, look. Uh, well, maybe it was a finger tapping error. So user dot, user dot display name. Yeah. So I must have some. It was this pale name or something like that. It was a error, and it's done. I know, eh? It's just crazy. So what's left? So these are done. Um, I'm able to log in and log out. Um, the way you can check if it's logged in to to test. If it's logged in and logged out, if you look at the application and there's nothing here, that means it's done, it's performed logout properly. It's like flushed everything from the from the local storage, and then we're good to go, right? So this is good. Um, uh, GitHub, to finish off the GitHub demo, uh, we know this is done, the to-do is done. We have one to-do left for next week. We have this in progress. We can finish this off because we know that it's done. So we can say that here. Um, so added user logout, OK? And then this closes, I forget what the hashtag is, um, number six. Is it number six? Yeah, number six, four, five, six. Closes number six. And then we'll say that uh, that is good. And then this is pushed. And we should be able to do, we see here, once it gets pushed, you can see that it's automatic. Uh, that it goes back to the done column or in the done column. And so where does this leave us in our project? Here's our project. The mean stack demo is almost done, right? We have a little bit left is what it is. Um, we have an issue. We have, we have one issue left to take care of. Uh, milestones wise, we have 75% complete of our security. That 25% guys is going to take an hour at least, maybe more. Let's be honest. We have to get it done, or else you're going to have trouble later on, right? We need uh, we need authentication to work properly, and we're, what we're left with is the guard service that stops us from going to each uh, link, stops us from seeing the the contact list, stops us on both the front end and the back end, and it protects us whether we type it on the URL directly using Postman or other tools to crack into it. It's got to work. The tokenized system has to work. We have the token. We can see it, we can see login, we can see logout, we can see registration. This is a good stopping point. And next week we'll finish off this and start microservices. Okay, questions around what we did today. I know it was a bit of a train wreck near the, near the last part, but it is what it is. We made, through, made it through, no questions. I know it's tough. I know it's tough when you're watching along and you're trying to figure it out too, and I'm flashing back and forth between two files. That's also very difficult. Um, and like I said, maybe someone in the video would have been, oh man, it's, it's right there at the end point. How can you not see it, right? Because that's what happens. When someone's observing you, you know, you can see it easily. But when you're actually in the, in the heat of things, then um, it's much more difficult. Anyways, that's it for me. Guys, thank you so much for coming by. It makes me, my, makes me feel good that you guys are here to watch me too. It's a bit of an audience. 
as opposed to me talking to myself, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, you know, so it makes it easier. And then remember, please take a look at that requirement for uh, the stuff we've got going on, uh, which is like I talked about before, um, your assignment, which is coming up, right? Please don't forget that. And then, um, you know, we'll give you more details about the, the assignment. And then next week is the group, uh, group project. Okay, so that's it for me. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of it. And we'll see you next week.